Y'all can hear me okay? Cool. I'm always late for everything, and it's exactly 2.30, so I'm going to start so I can do something on time for once. Uh, so, thanks. So my name is Julian Simeone, um, and I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about why geocoding is hard and how you and OSM uh, can help. So I work on the Peleus geocoder. Uh, you hopefully have heard of it. Um, we started it at Mapsen, and you might have heard that Mapsen is no more, which is a little sad. Um, but in a huge success for open source, basically all of the projects that Mapsen started have continued on strong. Uh, that's awesome, right? Score one for open source. Um, for us, on the Peleus team, two of us have co-founded a company called Cleared for Takeoff. Uh, we do consulting around geocoding and Peleus, and we run Geocode Earth, which is a hosted geocoding service. If that interests you, send us an email. Um, so here's another photo of the Earth. It is not actually an Earth photo theme. Um, so everywhere in the Earth is a little bit different, right? That's maybe the core problem of maps and geocoding. Um, this is a map of the border of India and Pakistan. It's one of the few places where you can see a border on the Earth, right? So it's maybe one of the few places where one of the man or human-made differences uh, can be seen. Um, and I want to tell a really funny story uh, about one of those differences. So um, my family's from Italy. Um, and one of our Italian relatives was visiting us in the United States a couple months ago. We were showing her around. We took her to a bunch of towns. And at the end, she had this question for us. Uh, she said, who is Saint Maine? And we're like, who is Saint Maine? I, I have no idea. And she's like, well, he must be really famous because he has all these streets all over the place named after him. Um, and it turned out she was talking about Maine streets, not Maine saints. Uh, they don't have the word street in Italy, right? Um, not even a little bit. They do have the word saint, and they do abbreviate it the same way as us. Um, you know, and, and we have the abbreviation saint as well, right? Um, in some cases, maybe even in the same street name. Uh, this is right by my uh, apartment in New York City, actually. And I didn't take this photo. Thankfully, someone on the internet put it there for me. Um, so just this simple example of the abbreviation for saint is a you know, a really good uh, test case for how, how we do things differently. It's even worse than that because saint uh, has translations that have the same abbreviation but are spelled differently, right? In Germany, you have sankt, but it's abbreviated the same. So what do we have to do about this? Do we have to build some giant machine learning program and like read every book that has ever been made and figure out some really, really, really sophisticated solution? I hope not. It might help. Um, but we can also maybe make a list. Um, and in true OSM fashion, there is already a list. Uh, it's on the wiki. And it's pretty complete. Here's the start of English. It's never going to fit on one slide. Um, and I don't know about you. I personally haven't really gotten super excited about a wiki in about 10 years. Um, but this is pretty cool, right? It's super accessible. It's super easy to edit. Um, there's lots of languages on here, including, for some reason, the language of our neighbors across the water, uh, Canadian, of course. Um, I think that's what they speak there. I'm not sure. Um, anyways, so um, I think this is an awesome solution. Nominatum, uh, the OpenStreetMap geocoder, already uses these wiki pages directly. I think that's actually really genius as well. Um, and we definitely look at it when uh, looking at ways to make Peleus better. Um, so this is something, there's plenty of, this is, uh, English is on there twice, of course. There's 34 languages um, so far. I think there's a few more than that. I think there's a few more than that just in New York City where I live. So definitely add some if you know a few abbreviations in other countries or languages. Um, another really good example. <laughs> yeah, I heard someone just mentally facepalm at this image. Yeah, that's exactly the idea. Um, but there's a good reason. So. A lot of data sets have point data, right? Uh, open addresses is a really awesome data set. 100% points, 500 million of them, kind of, kind of ridiculous. Um, there's lots of data sets that are just polygons, also super useful. OpenStreetMap is really cool because you can leverage the power of both in kind of interesting ways. Um, and the reason I put this super cheesy joke here um, is the, the following examples come from some of the work we've done this year with TriMet, the transit agency out in Portland, Oregon. 
Um, and Madeline Steele from, from their team was actually going to be here and present uh, actually right after me, I think. Um, but she couldn't make it, so I'm going to try to try to show off some of the work we've done with them, and uh, maybe she can tell, tell you about it next year. Um, so this is a screenshot of a route to a library in Portland. And you might be looking at it thinking, well, it's a little bit, a little bit looks like they took the long way. Maybe the scenic route looks like there's a nice lake back there. Um, what's happening here? And the answer is when you have a polygon, right, or, or a square, hopefully they rounded the corners. It's a nice rectangle um, for a building. And you need to route to it. You have to pick like a single point. How, how do you get to a how do you get to a rectangle? I don't know. Um, and usually you take like the centroid, right? You take the bounding box and you take one point. And it turns out if you do that, you can kind of see the point is probably like above the R in library. It turns out the closest path is in the back, right? So um, it makes you walk a little bit extra. And um, you know, a lot of routing engines are are designed. Um, this is from OSR, um, from Open Trip Planner, right? A lot of them are designed to handle. Uh, route accessibility requirements, right? So there might be a configurable limit for how long someone can walk. And so it might actually be really important that they're walking extra. Um, of course, OSM already has a solution for this. There's entrance tags. Um, we added an entrance tag to that building. We added support for it in Peleus, which we didn't have. And now it's a nice, uh, really simple walk. Uh, I think that's from a bus stop there. So um, again, huge win for the, the flexibility of OpenStreetMap. Um, you still have the exact same shape of the building, and then you have a, another point, which in this case happens to be part of the outline of the building. I guess it doesn't have to be. Um, and that lets you get exactly to where you need to go, which is pretty cool. Uh, here's a problem we haven't solved yet. Um, Portland International Airport is pretty big, as you can see from the giant red outline here. Um, if you take the centroid of this, I think it's actually on one of the runways. Uh, pro tip, you should not go on a runway um, in like a car or something if you're trying to drive to the airport. Um, there is a entrance tag for the terminal, and in the case of Portland International Airport, there's only one terminal, I think. Um, but when you search for Portland International Airport, you don't get the terminal, and there's no, uh, there's no link in between them. So um, I think that's something we may, have to, we may have to figure out. Maybe we have to make the airport a relation. I checked a bunch of other airports, and they're only relations if it was because the shape of the airport property required a relation. Um, so maybe we need to come up with like a new tag or something. And when I say come up with a new tag, I'm sure some of you think back to maybe some maybe not so friendly discussions that have happened on mailing lists or elsewhere. It might, might look something like this to you. I don't know. Um, and, and I don't know, you might feel a little like, ah, oh, man, we have to like debate and like everyone's going to chime in and it's going to just be like long and painful. <laughs> Um, but this is actually a strength of OSM as well, because no one knows how to build the perfect map, and we're all kind of figuring it out together, right? And our discussions about tags or anything else, um, they should probably be a, a little less rage-inducing sometimes. We definitely need um, more voices in those discussions. Uh, not everyone's really able to participate equally right now, but the fact that we have those discussions is like a feature, not a bug. Um, if we were waiting for the perfect schema to, de to describe the whole world to come around, I think we'd be waiting for a while still. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's hope we, we figure out something there. If anyone has ideas, I'd love to hear it. Um, another really interesting thing to think about. Um, here is two images from two very different cities. I know they look the same. That's kind of the point. Um, these are two cities on opposite sides of the earth. Anyone want to take a guess as to where these are? Exactly. No one has even the slightest clue. Great. Um, let me switch to satellite view and, uh, and see if they still look similar. Ooh, they do not. Uh, anyone have any ideas now? Yes. Sorry? Little Rock, Arkansas is not correct. Um, one of them's a gimme. Uh, on the right side is Detroit, Michigan. This is just like a mile away from here or less. And then the other side is Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, what's going on? Like, how, how is it possible, right? They look the same here, and they don't look the same here. Um, so many of you may know that Detroit has been undergoing a massive effort um, to remove blight from the city. And there is a little bit of blight in Detroit. Um, I think they've demolished 14,000 buildings, and they have a goal of demolishing 40,000. There's lots of other, other uh, incentive or uh, any, lots of other programs to clean up the city. 
um, and kind of make way for, for things to be a lot nicer in the future, including uh, tearing down lots of abandoned buildings, sometimes turning them into farms, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and so what that means is this, this map on the right is actually complete. It doesn't look complete, right? Um, but it is. But on the, on the left side in Johannesburg, you have the opposite problem. You have a very, oops, sorry, you get to see it again. I know it's funny. Um, you have a very, you know, bustling city, right? Johannesburg, I think, has like 9 million people in it. Um, and then the map in OSM is very incomplete. So something to think about here is, you know, both, uh, both Peleus and Nominatum have interpolation engines, right? And they're specifically designed to handle the case where there's incomplete data, right? And so both of them in, in cases like this will gr gladly interpolate between the few addresses that are there. And that's great when the data is complete, or incomplete, rather. When the data is complete, then it's going to make things up that don't actually exist. Um, that's something worth thinking about. Last year, if you were not completely distracted by the mountains uh, outside the window in Boulder, I know I definitely was quite a bit, um, you might have heard Aaron Cope give a talk um, about who's on first. He talked about lots of different things, including emoji. Uh, I learned a lot about emoji then. He also talked about this idea of managing absence. And in his case, he talked about managing absence of data, but there's really kind of two cases there. There's managing, uh, managing absence of, of our knowledge or managing absence of anything actually being there. And maybe you could argue that there's always something there, right? There's a field, there's something. Um, but there's really two facets to that problem. And I guess we should consider it a luxury, right, that OSM is coming to the point where we can start thinking that it's complete in some cases. Um, but uh, we are going to have to think about that because uh, just like, uh, just like this, uh, or just, sorry, excuse me, I had a really, really great uh, ending line. And so I'm going to try it again. So, um, no, I'm not, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. That's my talk. Uh, if you have more questions about geocoding, about Peleus, um, come chat with me after. And uh, enjoy. Uh, this is my hometown, Detroit, so it's good to be here. Um, people have been asking me where to go. Uh, I say you should drive a car four hours to like Traverse City. It's really beautiful in the Upper Peninsula or in northern Michigan. Um, but Detroit's cool, too. So it's good to see you all. Thanks a lot. I'd love to take some questions. I think I have a little bit of time. I can see people thinking. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, I mean, isn't there a whole concept of locale to solve that problem, right? Where it's the combination of language and um, and location, right? Because uh, I lived in Berlin for a while, for example, right? And um, plenty of people speak English in Berlin. Uh, there's, you know, many, many multilingual places, and um, so I, I think that as that as that wiki page in particular grows, I'm sure they'll en eventually adopt that. I don't think that that's really, really a problem. And uh, also, it's pretty ambiguous what it what the headings mean. So I, I kind of forced that joke because I thought it was it was pretty funny, right? But so there are solutions for it. That is, I think, one one complexity of human language in place that we have a pretty decent solution to. I'm sure someone who knows all about locales can prove me wrong. Anything else? Cool, well thanks a lot and uh, I'll talk to you tonight and tomorrow.